Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. We have here Mitsubishi L200. So, this one's just arrived. Some sort of DPF issue. Let's get inside, plug it in. OBD location is under there. Okay, so just confirming what the customer is telling me. There's no power, so it won't rev above 2000 RPM. Which is confirmed, it's not accelerating above 2000 RPM. But, if you put it in neutral, it will go to 3000 RPM. But still, not fu not full acceleration. Okay, so that is that's full acceleration, foot to the floor, quite slow. It's, it's in limp mode, but there isn't any engine light on, which is strange. Okay, we're going to try to use this tool again, Tinkscan 689BT, because I keep getting asked to use it on more videos. Okay, it's a 2018 L200 automatic. Try and do a health report. All I know is he says it's some sort of DPF fault, but these mechanics locally to him can't sort it out. He's come all the way down from Croydon, uh, South London. So it's taken him like three hours to get here, he said. So hopefully, hopefully I can sort it out for him. I don't want someone coming that, that long of a journey and we can't fix his problem. Okay, we have two fault codes, P2463, soot accumulation, and a P1498, DPF overloading. Right, we have an 80,000 miles on this vehicle. The reason the mileage would be interesting to me there is if we've got just a straight up block DPF and we haven't got any other faults stopping the regeneration, it just makes you think, why is the DPF blocked if there's no cause? Is it because it's just been driven incorrectly? Or have we got high mileage um, where we have either a damaged DPF or ash build up where the vehicle just cannot self regenerate. Come in here and we'll look at live data. Uh, so, not really too familiar with these Mitsubishi, so they could have, see, some, some cars have different sort of spellings and diff dot press. You see, like some of them wouldn't come up as if you type in differential, you know. Oh, well, look, we, have, we are getting that different pressure but like some cars Reynolds and stuff you'd see diff PRS so you'd need to know the abbreviations that do come up or know exactly what we're looking at for right soot loading by the pressure difference yeah, let's click a few of them we've got loads of different sort of readings HPA 15 to 20 12.7 grams of soot G uh, GL what's GL grams per liter I don't know uh, okay so yeah we have a block DPF so it looks like it's going to be a straightforward clean the DPF now I know this being a Japanese car I've never seen a Japanese car that doesn't have major oil dilution problems so first thing we'd want to do on this is check the oil level see is the oil level higher than normal higher than it should be any any japanese car so toyota any sort of asian car basically toyota mitsubishi honda subaru all of those cars have this issue with oil dilution um where the oil the oil would can sort of over five thousand or ten thousand miles you can you can double your capacity of oil that's in so if you if your engine should hold five liters you can see some of these after sort of five thousand miles you dip the dipstick and it's got eight or nine liters in it so because you're getting diesel fuel get into the dpf i do need to make some myth busting videos about that because i keep seeing people saying oh the diesel gets dumped in the dpf when the dpf regeneration fails that doesn't happen the dpf regeneration fails according to everybody else and then suddenly we just get a big dump of diesel in there no that doesn't happen each time the dpf regens we do get a slight bit of bore wash is what you'd call it so in the piston you have slight you know s slight wetness of diesel on the bores and some of that gets passed into the oil but when you're having regens often 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 it accumulates so and they've made a lot of these engines they've made the tolerance tolerances on the engine more so basically the engine isn't as tight so there's more of a gap 
between, uh, between the pistons and the, the diesel can seep through easier. Okay, so we have the engine oil above max, but it's not it's not into the danger zone. You see the little X on there? That's where you get the danger zone, basically. But a lot of these Japanese cars, once they're above the max, they won't regenerate on their own. So we've removed some oil. So you don't want it more than sort of halfway, really, so. Okay, now we're just gonna look at the engine itself. Looks like the DPF pressure sensor is over there. Here's your pipes. So you've got post DPF pipe over here, pre DPF pressure pipe here. So if we put our DPF cleaning fluid in here, this would be before the DPF, which was gonna clean it out. So we'll we'll tap in here somewhere. We're gonna remove that hose over there, connect our cleaning uh, compressor up to this pipe, and then put some flushing fluid inside. Okay, so now we've connected onto that pipe. With our gun, we've got the cleaning fluid in it that I normally use. That's connected to the compressor, it's 120 PSI. It's gonna put a few seconds worth of fluid in there. So we don't wanna to put too much in while the engine's off because it's a quite high sitting DPF and it will back up into the cylinders if you put too much in. Okay, we just put the clip back on now. Flu all the fluid gone inside. We'll get some foam and a bit of smoke come out. So we'll have some smoke coming out like that. We'll hold it at 3000 RPM. Now we want to see this pressure come down. Got a sort of noise out there. I don't know if it's coming from the AC pump. Let's turn it off. So we're then hovering around sort of 5 to 10 HPA now. Okay, now we need to go into special functions. And we need to now find how to reset this DPF. Learning DPF region, uh, maybe it's in here, nope. Well, we, don't, we don't want to perform a region, but sometimes the options are in here. Uh, let's look in the initialization, oh here we go. DPF exchange, DPF engine oil exchange. So we're gonna to need to do both of those because engine oil again on these, if it doesn't think that the engine oil has been changed, it won't do a regen, so we're just gonna uh, error on that one. Let's try the DPF exchange, uh, perform. No. Hasn't done that either. DPF pressure sensor, let's try that. Nope, doesn't want to do that either. So, all right, let's go back and see if we're able to clear the fault code. Sometimes even though it says it hasn't reset, sometimes it has, but it just says that it hasn't. Uh, let's see if the fault codes, no fault codes are there. Okay, we've switched to a different diagnostic machine. It's always good to have two, like I said, two different brands, because you will, each brand will work better on certain models. We're gonna try this one, see if we have any success with resetting the DPF and the DPF pressure sensor, and the oil as well. So let's look in hot functions first, oil reset. Auto oil reset, let's try that one. A lot of these aren't really compatible with the auto resets, but if not, we'll try and do it manually, find out how to do it manually. Check the result. Okay, so it says it's done. Let's see what it says about doing it manually. If the ignition lock is on, hold operation one is off, when the multi-vehicle display is pressed a few times, it displays the switches to the service reminder the multi information display is pressed where is that uh, just down here so we're just gonna see if we can reset that maybe press and hold okay was that it okay I think we've had success with that so let's move on to the DPF. We've only got DPF regeneration. Let's just click on it. Sometimes you go in here and it will give you the other options, but 
might be just bringing me straight to try and do a forced regen which we don't want to do no let's go back from that so what I'm going to do is go into the engine module see if there's different options here special functions initialization okay we'll come to this menu let's see if we can drag it down DPF exchange now you shouldn't do this unless the DPF has been cleaned because if you do this with a block DPF you can damage your DPF right now we're just going to try and do the DPF sensor exchange Okay, we've got full revs back. Okay, we have got another option here for malfunction, DPF malfunction reset, so we're just going to do that as well. It's best just to do as many resets as you can, anything related to all this sort of service. Read the fault codes now again, just make sure that they haven't cleared. If we clear them this time, they should now be gone. Obviously we're going to run the vehicle again. Now this tool, I thought is brilliant for the money. And it's it's worked on 99% of the cars I've, I've, I've seen. But it is nice to show that some, some t there are some vehicles that you will get the odd tool that doesn't work. And that's why you always have two diagnostics, at least two. I have four or maybe five, but always have at least two two different brands because if one is having trouble connecting to some software on one vehicle chances are your second tool will work and vice versa if you do that with the autel you find something that it's not communicating with try your different brand like launch or top down or whatever and this one is tinker um yeah so always have two tools that's that's the, that's what i'm saying okay so we're going to look at some of this live data we'll take the vehicle for a test drive now Okay, we'll try an acceleration again. You can see that the revs now are going all the way up. The vehicle has a lot more power. Okay, we have 80 degrees temperature on the coolant. Borderline, really, that's as max as it was going, so I don't know if there's an issue with the thermostat. It's borderline, basically, but I don't know if these, I'm not really too familiar with these vehicles. I don't know if that's standard operating temp for these or not. Um, DPF pressure. This is in kilopascals, so we have to sort of convert it zero to, to zero point five, and then a yeah, sort of shifting around a bit, shifting between five to fifteen, which is yeah, strange. That, that would be in millibars, but everything seems okay so far. Okay, we're just going to hold the revs up for another few minutes and just see if it makes any improvement. We still have around about 95 millibars of pressure at 3000 RPM. Okay, idle we have around about 5 millibars. We will hold it up to 3000 RPM. If we get it to stay in one position. 550 to 60. 5.5, 50 millibars. 5 millibars to 50 to 60 millibars. It's in around that range basically. That's it, we're all done. And he'll make his way home. And I'll see you on our next video.